Hi, my name is Elias Kakavis. I play Young Cal in season two of Euphoria, and you're watching Young Entertainment Mag. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining me today. You doing good today? Yeah, thank you so much for having me. This is super exciting and um, yeah, kind of a slow day today. I'm not, I'm not on set. So um, yeah, I'm just kind of hanging around, playing guitar, learning some lines and stuff. So yeah, it's a good day. Amazing. Okay, great. Well, we're going to get right into it. So what was it like getting this role? Did you watch the series beforehand? Did you know anything about this character when you auditioned for it? Walk us through the process of getting the role. Yeah, so I, I, I mean, I specifically remember getting the breakdown from my agent. Um, and this was one of the bigger agents at my agency, and I, I never talked to her a lot. Um, so I just remember, you know, sending it in and, you know, feeling, all right, it was, you know, I had a good audition, whatever. I try to put it out of my mind, but then she got my number and started texting me and, you know, checking in with me. And I was like, oh, this is different. This is different. And I remember like those two weeks in particular where it was just pretty stressful because she would call and like, all right, HBO, you're in the running with HBO, you know, this is great. And then you know, hear nothing for a few days. Then it was like, all right, Elias, you're in the you're in the front. You're one of the front runners for this. And I'm like, oh, wow. Um, and then when that happened, so I hadn't seen the show. I mean, because I auditioned when this show was just starting out for Nate. I went up for the role of Nate and I didn't get it. And I was so depressed. I just, you know, I was like, I'm not going to watch this, you know, kind of like, <laughs> yeah. like a stick it to a man. Like, you know, you don't cast me. I'm not going to watch your show. Totally. Um, and then, you know, I, I got this odd, uh, opportunity and uh, and so then when they told me I was in the front running for this, I was like, I grabbed my parents and I was like, mom and dad. So there's this and my mom <laughs> did the reading, did the read with me and there's okay. some forced language in the audition. Yeah. Um, and it was just hilarious watching her have to say those words. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm in I'm sit my parents down and I'm like, all right, so I'm, I'm in the front running for this show and you know, it's, it's pretty explicit. There's, you know, there's a lot of stuff. And my dad's like, dude, stop. What are you talking about? Of course, you're going to take this role. Of course, you're going to do it. And I'm like, whoa. All right. Fantastic. Wow. Awesome. And my mom was just like, I just want you to be safe. I just want <laughs> you to be safe. Very motherly, you know, answer. Mm -hmm. But um, so then, you know, um, I, I was so ready to get, you know, the rejection. Like I got this far and then I get mm -hmm. a no. But I got the call from my agent and she said, you got it. And I was just so stunned. She was like, aren't you excited? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm super excited. Uh, and it was incredible. And I, you know, I just remember, you know, letting it set in and it was, the excitement just started building and I, I couldn't contain it really. But um, so then, you know, my dad and I started watching the, we watched the entire season one together. We talked after every episode about, you know, the themes and, and we really watched Cal. Um, and I didn't know until I got the role that um, I was playing young Cal because in the audition mm -hmm. slides, it was this character Gil. They were trying oh. to, yeah, they were trying to hide, I guess, I guess it from leaking. And then when I officially got the role, it was like, you're playing young Cal. So then I was kind of able to, you know, watch Eric Dane and, and that yeah. was really incredible. That is so amazing. I do have a quick question. Is there something that you do to celebrate when you find out like I booked the role? Like, do you have a, a celebration ritual or like your go-to? Um, oh, that's a good question. I think I think I just bought my parents uh, and I one bottle of champagne. Nice. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I don't really have anything crazy yet. Um, but I'm usually I'm usually at home alone when I get these calls, and so I just run around screaming and <laughs> kind of tucking myself out, and then you know then I'm yeah. good to return back to reality. That's amazing. We're so happy for you, and it's such a cool full circle moment that you auditioned for the show, didn't yeah. get it, and then you came back and got this incredible role. So that's pretty amazing. So. Like you mentioned, you didn't know you were going to be playing Young Cow. So did you speak with Eric Dane about the role before you got into shooting? Or was it simply you watched the show and you learned about Young Cow from watching it? Yeah, I, I mean, I wish I got to speak to Eric beforehand, but um, no, I, I didn't. So I just watched the show, took my notes, 
um, learned as much as I could about the character and you know who he was. But then when we were on set, um, I, I'm trying to think. I think it was maybe one of the days where Henry and I shot our dance scene at that bar. Mm -hmm. um, and then Sam Levinson, the director, he comes up to me. He's like, Elias, good job tonight, bud. You're all you're all wrapped up. And but he's like, you know, I it'd be great if you want to stay around and watch your older version, Eric. And I'm like, oh my god, absolutely. So they walked me over to um, Video Village where they have all the monitors and. Eric's already in there and he just in his deep bellowy voice he goes is that young Cal over there and we get up we give a handshake and you know he you know we go around the trailers and we talk for a little bit that was the first time I got to talk to him was about you know it's just about done shooting but um I got to watch him he was absolutely incredible to watch um he was just the nicest guy in the world to me um, telling me, you know, he was a big fan of the work I was doing and, you know, giving me a little heads up for this and that in Hollywood and seriously, one of the best nights of my life talking to him. It was just so, so surreal. I'd been seeing his face on TV since I was a kid and now I'm standing next to this guy and he's talking to me about everything and the work. It was crazy. It was that crazy. is crazy. And then he's complimenting you. So I'm sure that was like so surreal. Surreal. And like the, you know, he, he didn't have to say all the nice things he did. Um, and then, you know, to go at, not even, you know, after the episode comes out and everything, and he's still, you know, saying nice things uh, about me to Vanity Fair and to men's like, it's, that was, that was unbelievable. I'm just, I sent him a DM thanking him, but I don't, you know, he'll never get it because he's got like 3 million <laughs> followers, but, um, he's, he's an incredible guy and I'm just so grateful. And, and it was such a privilege to play the younger, uh, Cal Jacobs. Yeah, that is so cool. I love I love hearing that entire story. So, okay, we are going to dive in here. Um, you mentioned mom and dad are cool about it, so that's good. Um, so there are so many intimate scenes in the 15 minutes that you show up in Euphoria. What was that experience like doing the intimate scenes from an actor's perspective? Is there something specific you have to do to get comfortable? Is it kind of just, I mean, it's, it's so crazy from a from a viewer's perspective. We we want to get inside your head and know what what is that like. <laughs> yeah, that was that was you know that was pretty strange. But we have you know on all sets now, there uh, is a position the intimacy coordinator, and on Euphoria that was Ma'am, and she was awesome. She was you know uh, just huge in terms of making everyone comfortable and. Um, she started, uh, like Rebecca and I had to do all these scenes and um, she got us together and then I guess what happened to make us emotionally and, and, and com comfortable with each other is Rebecca and I would just go for walks on Santa Monica Boulevard, get to know each other, you know, coffee in the morning or whatever. And um, yeah, we just got comfortable and we developed this um, trusting, trusting professional relationship and you know, it turned, you know, some of the most exposing, probably anxiety inducing work I've ever done into mm -hmm. some of them, you know, it was fun it, because we trusted each other and we're like, this is a weird business. You know, we're, <laughs> we're you know, it's like 10 o'clock on a Thursday and we're naked together <laughs> in a shower. And it's like, um, it's just like, yeah, we're, you know, it's just, we were able to laugh at it, I guess. And that was just because we were able to build a good rapport and, and, and a trusting relationship. Yeah, that's, that is so cool. And that leads into my next question of any young actors who may be faced with the same situation of they book something or they're going out for something and there are intimate, scene, intimate scenes involved. Do you have any advice for them or something that really helped you prepare that you could pass on to them? Yeah, I, I think just know your boundaries. You know, if it makes you uncomfortable, let that be known. Um, and uh, yeah, just you, to just be in tune and on the same page with your partner. Um, so, it, you know, just look out for your interests and for the interests of your partner. You guys are in this together. It's, it's you know, about you two. It's not about, um, you know, what, whoever else. If this is uncomfortable for you, let it be said, let it be known. Um, and just, yeah, know what you're, what you willing to do. Don't, That's don't great pass, feedback. Yeah, yeah. That's don't great. Past any, you know, bound, like if you think there's pressure, you know, forget them, let yourself, yeah, share your opinion. Yeah, okay, so that's amazing. That was 
exactly what I, I kind of wanted to touch on next was, I know that there must be a pressure on actors, on actresses when they book something. It's like, you don't want to say no when you get this incredible opportunity. So is that appropriate? Can you say, hey, I am not comfortable with this. Do you have that kind of freedom to share what you're comfortable with on screen and what you're not? I think as a, you know, if you're just starting out as an actor and something, you book a job and it requires so-and-so um, and you're uncomfortable with it, um, you'd probably, you're pro if you turn it down, you're probably going to lose the job. Um, mm -hmm. And that's totally okay. If you're not comfortable with it, don't do it. Um, but as you know, as you start to build a resume and, and you start to get offers and you don't have to audition and mm -hmm. all that stuff, and there's something in a script that you really like that makes you uncomfortable, you can work it out with the with the you know the people behind it. But I'd say starting out as an actor, um, you know, where it's like you have no say and you're you're really nobody. Um, it's you know if you're uncomfortable with something, you can't really you won't be able to bargain. You can turn it down, and that's totally again that's totally okay. Yeah, I love that. I love that you're kind of giving that permission for people to say to say it is okay. I don't I don't have to do this. There will be other things that come my way. So there, that's you know, great. A million auditions. A million auditions, you know, you'll get turned you'll get rejected a million times and there'll always be something else. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. We want to know um what are some things you did to get into young Cal's headspace? He had so many different types of feelings and emotions and you played the character so well the viewer can tangibly feel every single emotion you did such a remarkable job at making the audience feel for this character even though we have such a hard time sympathizing with older cal it's like you made us sympathize you made us feel bad for him so how did you get into young cal's headspace um and so it first started out um because i was i was back home when i got this call so I'm like, all right, what's the first thing I want to do is um, I kind of different approaches. Like usually you can start from the inside and go out like emotions and then physicality. I, for this one, um, knew the emotional side was going to be pretty heavy. So I wanted to start from the outside in. So I just started, you know, training like Cal would train. I hit the gym every day. I started eating right, um, running a lot. And then I actually... Um, called up one of my buddies from high school who was a wrestler, Momin, and he taught me how to he taught me how to wrestle um, for you know there's probably two three weeks before you know I left for L.A. where you know we were in you know the weirdest places and he was just teaching me how to wrestle and then we would go to the um, yeah some gyms and yeah it was great it was so great so I started with the physicality because he had to be in great shape he had to be you know a wrestler and I, I made sure I, I tried looking like a wrestler and then when it came to the uh emotional things i think i really started preparing for that um a little bit before i left for la and then and then when i got to la because um i didn't want to ruminate on it too much but it, it's kind of like so i'm a method actor that's my training and um that's what i like to do is pull from my real life so what i did you know mm -hmm. i'd take parallels in my life Maybe they don't exactly match up to what happened to Cal, but I take something that uh, elicited like a similar uh, emotional response and I, I'd put it in the scene. And, you know, that has to do with love, that has to do with heartbreak. Um, it has to do with um, confusion about some things. And, um, you know, he was just, there was a lot of internal conflict. And I feel like I've always had a lot of internal conflict in my life and that's, one of the reasons I connected to the, the script so well and connected to the character. Um, and then, you know, on top of that, I had a fantastic director to kind of help me get into the mindset. Sam was always there. I had makeup and hair and, and costume all get me into, you know, the clothes. And I literally, they literally put me in cow shoes and I got to walk around and they helped me get in there. And then, you know, uh, Henry, you know, I had a scene partner who was there with me. Mm -hmm. uh, who played Derek and he was great and Rebecca was great um and it was you know it was an amalgamation of all those things that really helped me get inside Cal that's amazing insight to hear from top to bottom that's super cool will the audience get to see more of young Cal I don't know I, I, okay. I you know the response uh, has been far beyond anything I, I imagined um and 
So who knows if Euphoria does a season three and and they want to show like maybe a young Marsha's backstory or if they're you know still um, riding off the you know the story of Cal and Derek. I I mean I would lo- it would be a dream come true to return and, and play this character some more. But um, yeah, we'll see. Who knows? Amazing. So speak on that. You said the response was amazing. We want to know what. Were you happy with the reaction that you got? It sounds like you were. What was everybody's reaction like to your role? I mean, I couldn't believe it. Like, like when you think about it logically, like this was a 15 minute guest spot, pretty much my first, you know, my first thing. It was a guest spot and, you know, it it just blew us up. Like Henry and I and, and Rebecca, just the attention was ridiculous. And it just, it's, it's just so touching, you know, the fan base of Euphoria is incredible and, you know, they're very passionate about the show and, you know, how could you not be? It's such a great show, but it, it, I mean, we've been received far beyond my wildest expectations, you know, with all the articles, with all the um, just attention, all the messages I'm getting on social media about, um, you know, people, you know, who have had a similar story to to Cal and Derek and have been sharing that with us and um, and, you know, said it moved them. And it, it's been unreal. And then all the article, it's just crazy. It's crazy. That's incredible. It's very exciting. Something you'll remember for the rest of your life. Forever. So I'm just going to slightly pivot here. Are you able to talk a little about Greg in the upcoming Pretty Little Liar series? No spoilers, obviously, but if you can share what fans of the series should expect, that would be amazing. I can't give you much uh, about that okay. right now, but I can tell you um, Greg is a very different character from Cal. I think the only thing they have in common is the fact that they both wear Letterman jackets. I mean, everything else is extremely different emotionally, um, you know, and physically too. I, you know, I guess I had to get and sh- stay in shape for this thing, but um, emotionally and as characters, they're just complete opposites. That's exactly what I wanted to know if they were similar opposites. So that's exciting. That's exciting. I can't wait to watch. So what is the one thing you hope the audience takes away from you, Elias, as an actor? Ooh. Um, well, uh, oh, that's a good question. Um, what do I want an audience to take away? I, I, I just, I guess I want um, people to see that I can hit those depths, you know, that I can... Um, move people and you know i that's that's all i want is to is to move people and um that that would i just yeah i want i want people to feel moved by my work and i guess you know the more roles i take on i think with this greg role it's good they're gonna see a whole nother side of me where it's a little bit um like a character um and just you know i had a lot of fun uh, on this set and, and uh, as opposed to cal where it was rewarding, but it was, you know, there were some deeper, deeper emotions that I was going through. So, I mean, I guess versatility um, and I want, yeah, I guess versatility, I think would be great. And, and uh, yeah, just people to, to like my work, I guess, and, and, and be moved by it. Absolutely. Well, I think that you nailed that. I think you conquered that. We can all see how dynamic and versatile and incredibly talented you are. So well, thank you so much, Elias, for joining us. You're absolutely incredible. We are such a big fan and we can't wait to see all the incredible things that you do so thanks again for joining young entertainment mag thank you so much this was so much fun and i I really appreciate you guys for having me this was a blast awesome well we'll have you again soon thanks so much all right thank you bye bye